I'm an idiot. There, I've said it. I wanted to get it right out of the way. Why am I an idiot? Because I bought this instead of this. There you go. That's the end of the video. Bye. <laughs> Obviously, it's not the end of the video. Or was I actually an idiot for buying this guitar? Let's dive into this guitar's tale and find out today. Hey guitar fanatics, welcome back to the channel. Or if you're new here, you're in for an absolute treat today. So you know that scene from The Matrix with Neo and Morpheus sitting across from each other with the red pill and the blue pill? Well, I took the chips and pill. <laughs> and boy, was it a wild freaking ride. You may remember that video that I put out about my relic to Chibson. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out after this video. It's quite a story. Long story short, I turned lemons into lemonade. But at what cost? Brace yourselves. Are you sitting down? 1300 bucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's 500 for the guitar and 800 odd in repairs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You heard that right. 800 in fixes. <laughs> We're talking new pickups, new hardware, fretwork, setup, the works. Insane, right? <laughs> I could have snagged a PRS USA CE for that much money if only I'd known. But hey, hindsight's 2020, and sometimes we have to learn the hard way, right? <laughs> so fast forward to a couple of weeks ago, my buddy Big Steve, and trust me, the name fits. The guy's a gentle giant. Anyways, he asks me if I want to test drive one of his Gibson Les Paul Studios. My response time? Faster than a shredding solo man. 15 minutes later, I'm face to face with this gorgeous 2002. Les Paul Studio and holy smokes the patina the lack of cracks it's just pure guitar porn this thing this thing has character for days you can see every gig every jam session etched into its service and I'm left wondering why oh why did I take the chips and pill <laughs> but let's not jump to conclusions just yet Today we're settling the score. Gibson or Chibson? Did I make the right call or did I fumble with this guitar buying decision here? But first, if you dig this kind of content, smash that subscribe button and ring the bell. Trust me, you don't want to miss what's coming next. Your future self will thank you when your feed is filled with juicy guitar content. Alrighty, price point, both around $1,300. That's around thousand pounds in the UK. But here's the kicker. You can snag a used Gibson Les Paul Studio for that price and it'll age like fine wine. Just look at this 2002 beauty. It's got a story to tell. Unlike the Chibson, which started life as a relic wannabe. Now I'll be honest, the Gibson's got me drooling. The authentic battle scars, that glow, it's got sunshine pouring out of it. The lack of cracking isn't just forks finish. It's the real deal, earned through years of temperature change and loving use. My Chibson, it looks a bit cloudy in comparison. Don't get me wrong, the relic job isn't bad, but side by side, it's like comparing a movie prop to the genuine article. Now let's talk about the feel. The Gibson is a beast. Nine pounds of pure rock and roll. Yeah, that's just over four kilos for our metric friends. That heft translates into tone you can feel in your bones. It's got sustain for days and a resonant that just screams quality. My Chibson, it's lightweight, contender at eight pounds, about 3.6 kilos. It's easier on the shoulder during those marathon gigs, sure, but it's missing that low end punch and fullness that the Gibson delivers effortlessly. Sound-wise, both guitars can howl. I've modded the Chibson with some killer pickups. There's an arcane in the bridge and something in the neck. Watch the other video. <laughs> It'll tell you what I put in the neck. <laughs> so it's no slouch in the tone department. It can sing like a bird and growl like a wolf when I need it to. But the Gibson, it's got a depth and fullness that's hard to beat. That low end is more pronounced. The mids are creamier and the highs have a sparkle. That's just, well, it's just classic Les Paul tone that's graced thousands of records. The necks on both guitars feel quite similar at first glance, but I've got to give the win to the Gibson. The profile is just right. Not too thick, not too thin. Those frets smoother than butter on a hot day. 
even though I leveled, crowned and polished the frets on my Chibi here, they still don't quite match up to the playability of the Gibson. It's those little details that add up to a superior playing experience. Hardware? No contest. The Gibson's build quality screams premium from every angle. The tuners have a smooth, precise action that keeps you in tune. Even during the wildest bends, the bridge feels rock solid, providing great sustain and intonation. The pickups? They're the real deal, providing those iconic PAF style tones that Les Pauls are famous for. Even the control knobs, they feel substantial. It's like every component was chosen and crafted with care. And with my chippy chips here, I had to replace everything and I put quality hardware on it completely. The tuners are Goto tuners. Put expensive pickups on there. The bridge is made of aluminum or aluminum for our American friends. And the knobs, I basically put CTS pots in here. But I did have to replace everything. And I could have got all of that on a stock Gibson Les Paul Studio. Why? Why? Why did I do it? Now, Here's the million dollar question. Resale value. The Gibson, it holds its own. <laughs> These things are like fine wine. They actually appreciate over time if you take care of them. My Gibson, let's just say it's priceless. <laughs> As in it has no price. <laughs> and by priceless, I actually mean it's worth a lot to me personally, but on the open market, well, let's just say I won't be funding my retirement with it. <laughs> So did I mess up? You tell me. Was the journey of fixing up the chips and worth it? Or should I have gone for the real deal from the start? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I'm curious to hear what you think. From my perspective, let's just say once bitten, if you catch my riff, right? <laughs> and you know, some of my friends have actually asked me about where they can get a chips and I've kind of said to them, you know what, maybe think of something else. And one such something else is something like this, my vintage V100 AFD, this guitar. This guitar feels like the Gibson. It feels like the real deal. It is so close. It's got some heft to it. This is about nine pounds in weight as well. And the only thing I had to do to this is change the knobs. This sounds enormous. It has that weight in the sound as well, that depth of sound which is just incredible. And on the used market, you can get these for just a couple hundred bucks. In fact, I paid 250 pounds for this, which in US dollars is maybe around touching $400. An absolute bargain for that. It's an amazing guitar. I should really use this more often in videos. Now, before we dive into this Sonic showdown, let me give you the lowdown on the rig that I used to record this track. To really capture that classic Les Paul into martial tone, I brought out my PRS HDRX20. If you haven't checked out my video on this amp, do yourself a favor and give it a watch after this. It's an absolute tone monster. You can do EVH for days, trust me. And to push this amp into the stratosphere, I'm boosting it with my trusty JPOD1 pedal. This combination gives us the perfect blend of punch, sustain and harmonic richness that Les Pauls are famous for. And those pristine clean tones you're about to hear, they are courtesy of my equally amazing PRS MT15 amp. Hopefully, Dokley, now that you know what we're working with, let's put these guitars through their paces. Can you tell which is which just by listening? Close your eyes and pay attention to the subtleties in tone sustain and overall character of each guitar. And then leave a comment and let me know if you guessed which was which. Alrighty Rockstars, time for some John Sykes inspired white snake goodness. Why Sykes? Well, if you know, you know. <laughs> the man's Les Paul tone on the 1987 White Snake album is the stuff of legends. And yes, I used a Marshall style amp rather than a Mesa style amp. I know he used a Coliseum. But hey, you know, when in Rome, as in my studio, <laughs> and if you're not familiar with that album, do yourself a favor and check it out after this video. Your ears will absolutely love you for it. If you're craving more behind the scenes action, head over to my Patreon. I've got exclusive contents, early access to videos, and even some one-to-one -one gear talk sessions for my top tier supporters as well. So do check it out. You will love it over there. 
a huge shout out and thank you to my buddy Steve for lending me this awesome, awesome guitar. I'm seeing him on Saturday. We're going to hang out and jam. It's going to be a blast. Remember to like, subscribe and share if you enjoyed the show. Your support means the world and it helps me to bring you more guitar obsessed content just like this. Keep those axes sharp, practice those riffs and I'll catch you on the flip side.